All right, today we got another installation that we're working on besides boats in my truck. You might notice that this truck appears to be the same color, but it's a little different. This is a long bed sponsored by Rainier. And what we're doing is installing the auxiliary fuel tank gravity fillet feed and I'm going to share with you how I install these kits. Now the RDS kit is supposed to be installed by cutting this metal tube here and putting on the ram trucks a one and three quarter inch pipe adapter. But Instead of having to remove this entire system, which this one's got 200 something thousand miles on it, it's a little dirty. I buy the Chevy and early Ford one, and it's an inch and a half. Now this hose goes from an inch and three quarters to an inch and a half ID going into the tank. This gets you a little bit better control of the fuel flow. Plus that hose is a lot cheaper part to replace should you screw it up than this entire assembly. Huge difference, especially when you're cutting an aluminum pipe for your installation. Listening to Brent and the family PFI speed from IFO. It's one of my favorite videos watching the family race. Yeah, go. Look, you got all four gears. <laughs> that was an awesome race. <laughs> Nothing better to see my friends and their family having a great time. It is epic. There he goes. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, I was actually at that race. All right, so back to business. What we're doing today is I'm laying down the little rubber strips right now that this tank will go on. We've already drilled the holes to mounting it per DOT specs. Um, we're gonna go through adding the fittings as proper. And then we'll have the fuel pump and fuel filter assembly mounted right over here. All right, we've now installed the RDS 50 gallon tank. This is an auxiliary tank. We've bolted it with the spring bolts to the bed of the truck. We have the rollover valve has a loop in it and it goes down to the base of the truck in a separate area from the fill port. And it's got a sock on the end of it so it doesn't get any debris. Now this is a, a marine fuel water separator. And on the back side of it, we have a marine diesel fuel pump that has an 80 micron stainless steel filter in it. It comes from the main tank up to the pump, from the pump into the filter housing. From the filter housing, it goes through the filtration system, has a water separator so you can see if you have any debris. And then it has this valve here. This sends fuel to the main tank on the truck. It's the stainless steel ball valve. And then when this is open, um, it will flow into the fuel tank and it'll, it will flow into the fuel tank while you're driving. Or if you want only to polish the fuel, and that means you're recirculating the fuel back into this auxiliary tank. You can do that continuously to continuously. If you think you got bad fuel, you can circulate your fuel constantly so that you're taking all the impurities, the water, the dirt, the trash, and putting it into the filter assembly here. Um, if you think that that's run and cycled long enough, you can go ahead and open this up and it'll automatically send fuel 
back to the main tank of the truck. And that increases the life of your fuel pumps, increases the life of your engine, your injectors, and everything related to your fuel system. And that's so simple. The cost of these items, it's about 150 bucks for this system right here. The pump's another 125. Of course, this fuel tank is about $1,000. In the long run, the extra 50 gallons makes a big difference. And if you use one of those aftermarket uh, tanks that mount to the bed or under to the bed, uh, you can get one of the 55 gallon, I think they're Titan tanks or something like that. And you can increase your range considerably. Um, I have it tied into the auxiliary switches. Go ahead and hit the switches, SA. That's it. That's all it does. Not a bad setup. Tanya's Ram 3500 is equipped with the extra switches. Is that it? The auxiliary switches option which gives you some really, really cool options when you're wiring this. I've got the wires just hanging right now. I'm getting ready to tie all that up. I put an extra couple loops into it because she didn't have the harness. She doesn't have the harness that plugs into this. It comes from the factory. So we pick the pin, put a blade connector in it and it slides right in. It makes it really, really easy for the install. So we'll get this all zip tied, but it works really, really well because on the number five circuit, these these top pieces here are all 40 amp. And you can see by the thickness of the wire, for the, little, for the little pump we're running, we don't need 40 amps. So number five positions up here on the top, I'll zoom in on that so you can see. That number five position is fine for 20 to 25 amps. The pump that we're using only draws five amps. So it's a really, really easy low current pump. So we're gonna use that location number five. Number one is like for a winch or a PTO, but there's a few others that we can select from later. If you're blessed to have one of these Ram trucks that has the auxiliary switches, right there, you see it. I wish I had it. It's one thing I really, really wish my truck had. Um, it's really simple if you have it. You go in here, you enter your pin. Then it gives you the auxiliary switches set up. And you can set up each one of the switches individually. Since we did five, I'll select five here and show you. You can put the type of the switch. And the type is latching. It means you hit it and it stays running while until you, un, until you turn it off. If you go to momentary, that's only allowing it to be on for the moment that you're pressing the button. Then you go to the power source and go to ignition. It means it'll only come on when you have the ignition running. If you go to the battery mode, you can turn it on at any time and let it run. Last state only works if you have a latching mode um, not momentary. And I don't want this to, I, I don't want the fuel pump to come on if she shuts the truck off and then turns the truck back on. I want her to physically be able to hit the button and know that it's on. So I didn't put that on, but it's very, very simple to set these switches up and it's a great option. I wish my truck had works really, really well. I'll just reach down here, hit number five with my Band-aided finger, pump kicks on, pump kicks off. Awesome right, setup. Tanya's truck is done. She's hooking up to the horse trailer. And uh, she'll get to skip a lot of those fuel pumps now that she's got a tank. I got it topped off. It's gonna be awesome. This is a sick truck. And it's definitely got some miles on it. There she goes. Watch a chick drive a 45 foot horse trailer. 
through the gate. So you can do it. And we'll see you again soon.